Hello, congregation, family, and friends. I pray that all is well with you. Thanks for joining me tonight. You know, I need to talk about something uh, with you tonight. I've spoken on this before, and it's something that's really been plaguing me, and it's time to revisit it again. To me, this is a topic and a subject that we can't visit too often because of the abuse that's happening in the spiritual world. And here's what I'm talking about. Let, let me start here. Um, first of all, if you have a Bible with you, we're going to be looking at a passage in Deuteronomy chapter 18. If you want to get your Bibles open to Deuteronomy 18, or if you are just taking notes. You know, we live in a world and a society where certain things are true and false. There's a lot of gray areas. There's a lot of areas for argument. There's a lot of areas where you can make um, uh, an argument uh, or a condition on both sides. But there are some things in this world that are absolutely true. God is true. Jesus Christ, as the Son of God, is true. This book right here that I preach from all the time, the Bible, this book is true. Whether you believe it or not is up to you. But it doesn't negate the fact that the Bible is true and God is true. Now, I base all of my sermons, all of my Bible studies, all of my talks on the fact that the Bible is true. And so I'm accepting it by faith that the Bible is the Word of God. It is infallible. It is unchanging. It is eternal. And what God has said in here is the truth. Now, Having said that and established that, and I pray that you agree with me, there are certain things that, that God tells us about and warns us about things that are false. There's a lot of things that God tells us in the Bible of things that are true. We know that Jesus is the Son of God. We know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. We know from the Bible how the world began, why it's in the disastrous mess it's in, and how it's going to all end. We read all of that, and all of that is true. But then God goes on to tell us certain things, to beware of certain things that are false. That's what I want to get to in my message tonight. The difference between true and false. There is, and it seems to proliferate more and more, and I may say some things in this talk that are going to upset you. I'm fully expecting maybe a troll or two to pop up here. And if they do, we'll just block them out because they're not interested in hearing what truth is. They're not interested in hearing God's truth. There has been, and in the closer we get to Jesus' return, this has really been, been bothering my spirit all day long. And so um, as we get closer to Jesus' return, there is more and more and more false prophets, false Bible teachers, phonies, charlatans that are proliferating everywhere. There are certain movements that are growing and growing. Charismatic movement has been around for a while. You have the prosperity gospel charlatans that are around. You now have new, the New Apostolic Reformation or NAR that's around. You have the Hebrew Israelites that are now around. There, there seems to be more and more of these groups that keep popping up all the time. And what we have to decide and determine is whether these groups, whether these people who are promulgating this, whether these who are preaching this, are preaching truth or they're preaching falsehoods. Is it true what they say or is what they say false? And the only way to know is to go to this book. The only way to know is to go to the Bible itself. If God says it's true, then it's true. If God says it's false, then it's false. And we can, we can just draw that line between true and false and just leave it right there. If God has the final say, God has the final word on everything, then we need to, you hear me say it all the time, we need to be Bereans. We need to be faithful Bereans. We need to check out everything that we hear by this. Everything, including everything you've ever heard me say or preach or teach. You check it out for yourself in Scripture. Now, because there are so many false prophets around, 
There are so many of these uh, pay for prophecy things. You know what I'm talking about. You have these ministries and you have these phony, these phony preachers that'll say to you, you know, you sow a seed and you sow the biggest seed you can. And God is going to turn around and bless you and all of this gobbledygook. Am I saying that God can't bless you? No, I'm not saying that. I've never said that. What I am saying is, if you have to pay for a miracle, if you have to pay to receive a prophecy, if you have to pay someone to hear what your itching ears want to hear, then may I suggest to you that you are not following this. Because you're allowing man, a man or a woman, to manipulate you into something that is simply not true. We're going to start here, and I, I want to show you something. Because you may write this off as some kind of obscure Old Testament uh, passage that doesn't have any meaning today. And in that, you would be wrong. So if you're with me, we're in Deuteronomy 18. God starts talking about things like spiritism. He starts talking about divination. Listen to this. We're going to read some scripture tonight. We're going to get into this a little bit so that we understand exactly what God is talking about. And then you'll be able to discern what you see and what you hear out here in the modern world as to who might be a true man or woman of God and who's just playing games or who's a phony or who's under the influence of the devil or whatever. Listen to this. When you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. This is in Deuteronomy. This is instructions that God gave his chosen people, Israel, when they were entered into the promised land. He says, there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. And that was a horrible thing where, where, where these people that were worshiping false gods would take their children and toss them into the fire and sacrifice them on the fire to these phony gods. You shall not one use one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, one who interprets omens or a sorcerer, one who casts a spell or a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable things, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. Now, did you just hear that list? Do you know how many people these days fall in for this nonsense of tarot cards and reading tea leaves and paying attention to horoscopes and going to mediums and, and, and having their future told from a crystal ball and whatever? All these people are either under the influence of the devil or they are phonies. They are not working for God. They are not part of the family of God. And God says have nothing to do with them. If you go to a medium or if you go into a seance, and I know what I'm talking about because years ago I was involved in some of this stuff. Years ago, many years ago, before I was saved, okay, I'm being transparent here. I sat in seances. I had, I, I, I had these weird experiences from the dark side. So trust me when I tell you that that power is real and it's there and it's evil and it's waiting to destroy you. And if you fall into that in any way, shape, or form, you could be sucked right into that vortex and never come back out again. I was involved in seances. I was involved with trying to call up people from the dead and try to talk to people who were already dead. I saw things and I experienced things that I never want to ever again. And let me assure you, just in case you think I'm making this up, okay? Just in case you think I'm making this up, there is a dark side. There is an evil side. There is a kingdom of Satan. It's very real. It's very powerful. It's not more powerful than the kingdom of God. But I've been on the other side. I was on the other side before I gave my life to Jesus Christ 34 years ago. I experienced that. And I know other people that have too. It is not a joke. It is nothing to be made fun of. And it's nothing to take lightly. It is out there. And so we're looking at this portion here, and you may say, well, that God was just talking to the Israelites back when they were in the promised land. He's not talking about this today. The Bible is just as relevant for today as it was at the time it was written. The Bible will always be relevant because it is the eternal word of God. It will always be relevant. 
Does that mean that we obey every ceremonial law anymore? No, there are certain things that God has changed between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There are certain things that we don't have to abide by, like animal sacrifice anymore, because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. So we don't have to kill animals. There are cults around that still sacrifice animals. There are still people that believe that we have to live under the law and not under grace. All of these people, they're lost. They don't understand what the Bible is saying. And so we're looking at a list like this, and, and God is saying, he was saying back then, and he's saying even now, don't go to a medium. Don't get involved with those kind of people that do spirit things and try to reach the dead. Don't go, he's listing them all. Don't, use, don't go to someone who uses divination, who practices witchcraft. That's out there in the church these days, who interprets omens, who's a sorcerer. You see, once you give power to the devil, once you give power to the devil, you no longer have truth. What you have is false, something that is false, something that is evil, something that is ugly, something that is destroying, and something that will take you right to hell. It's, it's God is true, the devil is false. God is truth, and the devil is a liar. False is false. We have, to, we have to recognize this, and we can't sugarcoat things, and we can't turn our heads and look or not look at things because it's the current trend or because there's a preacher that has 40,000 people in a huge auditorium, and we think, well, he must be preaching the truth or she must be preaching the truth because they're gathering thousands of people. Meanwhile, the little obscure guy pastors 25 people in a local church that nobody knows about and that local pastor is 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 preaching truth and nobody wants to hear him but if you want to hear a feel-good message if you want to hear some kind of trickery here where if you just give your biggest seed god is going to turn around and bless you a hundredfold and it's guaranteed and the bible says that you're supposed to have health and you're supposed to have wealth and it's guaranteed, and if you don't, you don't have enough faith, guess what? Those people are liars. They are charlatans. They are part of movements that have no basis in Scripture, cannot be proved by Scripture. And I'm going to show you in a couple of places exactly why I'm saying that. In the same chapter, in Deuteronomy 18, okay, after God talks about in verse 15 and verse 18, he's talking about raising up a prophet from among you countrymen. I will put my words in his mouth. He's talking about Jesus, the true prophet, the real prophet, okay? Now, but look, here's, here's what I want you to see. Verse 20 of Deuteronomy 18 says this, the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. That was an Old Testament law. If you dare to be a prophet and you said, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord didn't say it, that was worthy of death. Now, we don't do that in the New Testament. We don't kill or stone false prophets anymore. We don't do that. Verse 21, you may say in your heart, how will we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? A very good question. That's a question all of us should be asking us. That's almost being a Berean. How do we know when someone is preaching or teaching the word of God or sharing a vision or whatever they're doing? How do we know that it really comes from God? How do we know? There has to be some sort of a test. There has to be some sort of criteria as to whether it's really of God or not of God. Well, the answer is right here. Verse 22, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, you hear me? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or does not come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. Did you hear me? Listen, this is God saying it. This isn't Thomas saying it. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, Okay, if you have a prophet, you're listening to a prophet, you're under the teaching of a prophet, and that prophet says, thus saith the Lord. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. Did you hear me? You shall not be afraid. 
The false prophets that are out here that are telling you, thus saith the Lord, you can't prove it by scripture. They're getting some kind of special revelation. There's nobody to back up what they're saying. They simply come out and they say some of these bizarre things. The Lord told me that you need to write me a check for $1,000. Make it your biggest offering. And when you send me a check for $1,000, I'm going to send you back a copy of my handprint, or I'm going to send you back a miracle spring water, or I'm going to send you back some other nonsense, and we're going to have a point of contact, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cash your $1,000 check, or I'm going to charge your $1,000 on the credit card, and I'm going to get rich off of you, and I don't really care if it comes true or not. This is what the false prophets and the false Bible teachers and the phonies and the charlatans are doing out there. Am I the only one that's screaming about this? No, I am not. There are others that teach on this. There are others that are warning on this. But I felt it in my spirit all day long. I've been restless all day long. I'm like, Lord, I need to come out here and I just need to lay it out there. And if somebody doesn't like it, if someone gets offended, take it up with God. Take it up with God. You're hearing his very own words. If a prophet says something, Thus saith the Lord, or this is going to come true, or that's going to happen to you, and it doesn't happen. That didn't come from the Lord. That prophet did not receive a vision or a message or whatever from the Lord. He did not hear from the Lord. She did not hear from the Lord. And it says here, we should also not be afraid of them. You can't be afraid of someone who's a false prophet or a phony prophet. And I'm going to show you in Matthew in a couple of minutes why that's possible why we should not be afraid of the phony prophet. Now, here's, here's what we do have to be careful of. We have to be very careful because a lot of them are slick. A lot of them are very polished, you know, fancy suits and beautiful stages and people in the audience that's just adoring them. And they just seem to be preaching something that just came right from the lips of God. And if you're not checking it out for yourself, if you're just taking them at face value, the same way, if you take me at face value, you're just as much at fault as if I'm listening to someone and I don't check them out. Even the pastors that I sit under, when I hear them preach something, I go back and make sure what I'm hearing is true because I don't want to fall into falsehood. I don't want to fall into something where I'm going to get fleeced for my money or I'm risking my soul for eternal damnation because I'm following somebody who claims to be a prophet. Let me ask you this, and you don't have to you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. It just comes to my head. You know, there are actually people around that call themselves not only apostles, but chief apostles. Have you ever seen or heard anyone? They're out here on social media. I've had to block a few of them. They actually have the audacity, the gall to call themselves chief apostles. And I defy you to find anywhere in scripture where the phrase chief apostle is. You can go ahead and look. You won't find it. It's not there. There is no such phrase as chief apostle. Even those 12 that Jesus picked, none of them were chief apostles. The apostle Peter, even though he gave, he had the privilege of giving the sermon on Pentecost Sunday, he's not even a chief apostle. John, the apostle that, John, that Jesus loved, he's not a chief apostle. So where are these people coming from calling themselves chief apostles? It's coming from a movement where somehow or other a chief apostle essentially is in charge of other apostles, you see. So you work your way up the ladder, I suppose. You appoint yourself an apostle or somebody calls you an apostle. Do you understand and do you realize that there is a biblical precedent? There is a biblical rule on how you become an apostle. There are certain criteria that there's only 13 apostles that there's ever been 13 apostles. You had the original 12 and you had Paul. There's no one else that's ever been an apostle. Now, some may argue and say, well, you know, the five-fold ministry uh, movement that talks about, you know, some are evangelists, some are apostles, some are teachers, and so on. That can all be argued against. Uh, that can all be proven that some of that is not happening today. What I'm concerned about is you suddenly following maybe someone who suddenly is an apostle. Where did they get that? Where did they get that from? Who appointed them an apostle? Who told them they were an apostle? Oh, they may say, well, they got a vision from God, or however that works out. But you see, if you gather enough apostles underneath you, you can then rise up to be a chief apostle. Wow, you're creating an office 
that was never in scripture. Are you kidding? Seriously? This is the kind of stuff that you see out here, not only on social media, but it's all in the churches. There's false teaching going on in the churches. And all I'm saying to you in this message, the only thing I want you to do is open your eyes. Open your eyes. This is truth. True is true and false is false. And just as we looked at this one scripture here, I preached not long ago in 2 Timothy 4, where it talks about in the last days, people will have itching ears. And they're going to seek out those people who are telling them exactly what they want to hear. And that is happening now more than ever more. Take a look at the big churches that are around. Take a listen to some of the messages that are being preached. And you tell me after you study them against what the Bible says, if they're actually true or not. It's incredible the nonsense that is being preached out there. And those people who are in the um, prosperity gospel movement, also known as the name it and claim it movement, you know who's getting rich off them? The preachers themselves. Again, don't misunderstand me. I am not saying that God cannot bless you financially. I am not saying that he can't bring you into perfect health. I am not saying that he could make you very wealthy if that was his will for your life. The problem is that the prosperity preachers and teachers take a handful of scriptures, they twist them around, they take them out of context, and they come up with a whole new theology. And two of their pillars are this, that God wants you healthy and God wants you wealthy. Okay? That's, what, that's two of their pillars. God wants you healthy, and he wants you wealthy. Have you ever noticed? I mean, if you're looking at these faith healers, if God wants you healthy, how come some of them have eyeglasses on? How come some of them have uh, hearing aids in? How come some of them walk with a limp? How come some of them are getting gray and old and starting to get dementia? If they're supposed to be in health, you would think that God would bless his men and women of God who are preaching this prosperity gospel. They're rich. A lot of them are filthy rich. And they're living in the world. They're building up treasures on earth and zero in heaven. If you get caught up in that, there's a possibility you may never get out of it. But you have to be able to see and step back and say, is what I'm hearing the truth? True is true and false is false. No matter how you slice it, there's either truth or there's not truth. What we're hearing when we hear preaching or teaching it's either true or not. If you read the book, you read the Bible, every word you're reading is true. You can bank on it. You can, you, can, you can put your very soul on these words of God. What you can't do is put your very soul onto a man. And I don't care how anointed they appear to be. I don't care how righteous they appear to be or how well they can preach the scriptures. None of that matters. What matters is, are they speaking out of turn are they speaking presumptuously are they saying thus saith the lord when the lord has never said are they bringing revelations are they telling you things that don't come true then according to the bible they are false prophets now watch matthew 24 jesus started talking about in matthew 24 some of the signs of his return some of the things that are going to happen you know the abomination uh, the abomination of desolation is coming and so on listen to this matthew 24 verse 24 here's one of the signs when jesus is on his way back false christ and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead if possible even the elect you hear that? Jesus' own words. He said, false Christ. There'll be people that will think they're Christ. Does the name David Koresh or Jim Jones ring a bell with you? There are people that have existed recently to think they're the Messiah or think they're the next coming of the Messiah, and they're taking people right to hell with them. Jesus said, there'll be false Christ and false prophets will arise. Not maybe. They're going to. They're arising. False prophets and will show great signs and wonders. What's the best way to hoodwink someone? Show them a miracle. Show them a sign. Show them a wonder. What happened? What did Jesus say to these Pharisees when they kept saying, show us a sign, show us a sign? Jesus said, an evil and adulterous generation seek for a sign. There will be no sign except for the sign of the prophet Jonah. Jonah. 
What was that sign? Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. Jesus was in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. You see the symbolism? You see what Jesus was talking about? As Jonah was good as dead inside that whale, and he came back to life. So I'm going to be in the heart of the earth, and I'm coming back to life. You get the sign of the prophet Jonah, and that's it. You... I don't know if you've ever, and I, I got caught up in this too, and I'm just bearing, I'm just bearing my soul for you tonight. Um, I used to get caught up in some of these faith healers, okay? I actually thought some of them were actually anointed by God. When a faith healer does one of two things, then maybe you can believe in them. One of two things. Number one, if a faith healer can ever, ever duplicate one of the miracles that Jesus did in the exact same way, then we may have something to talk about. When you see a prophet or a faith healer actually raise someone from the dead when they've been in the grave for four days like Lazarus, then we'll talk. When you see a faith healer actually, uh, you see a withered hand and, and he says, stretch out your hand and it stretches out right before you in the TV cameras or in front of your eyes. You don't see stuff like that. What you do is you see stuff like, oh, you're being healed of diabetes. You can't prove whether they're healed of diabetes. You're being healed of your arthritis. Get up and walk. There's no miracle with that. The person could walk to begin with. And you see them hobbling along, okay? When somebody says, what's your name or what's your address? And some of this other nonsense, they have been fed this information. Nothing is coming from God. Wake up. When a faith healer can do a, a miracle exactly the way Jesus did, and I'm not talking about just covering somebody's eyes. Somebody is just legally blind, but they can still see. I'm talking about someone who was stone cold deaf or definitely blind and can't see a thing. And suddenly, because they prayed or laid hands on them, suddenly they can see. You don't see that. You don't hear about that. You don't hear about people being risen from the dead unless it's a scheme. That's number one. Number two, if a faith healer truly had what they say they have, they'd be in every hospital in this country, every hospital around the world, bringing people out of bed and going around to every person who's bedridden and laying hands on them and up they come. And they would be healed and they would be healed. And if these faith healers truly believe that we all are supposed to be healthy and wealthy based on the Bible, then why are there hospitals? Why did somebody like Oral Roberts build a hospital in Tulsa when he was just about the most famous faith healer of all? Why would he build a hospital if he had the faith and he could heal people? Are you kidding me? And people gave him millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And his ministry is still around through his son. Why are people falling for this? You know why? Because truth is truth and falsehood is falsehood. And the, the less you know this, the less you study it. The less you submit to it, the more you're going to get. I tell you all the time. I've told you this for years. Be a Berean. Acts 17, 11. Be a Berean. You owe it to yourself. Your very soul may be at stake. Be a Berean. Acts 17, 11 says the Bereans were more noble than others. They weren't smarter. They weren't nicer. They didn't have more money. They weren't healthier. Here's what they did. They received the word with all readiness. They were eager. They wanted to hear the word. They wanted to hear what Paul was preaching to them. They didn't stop there. They turned around and then they searched the scriptures daily. See that in your Bible? Acts 17, 11. Search the scriptures daily to make sure what they were hearing was true. You need to do that. You need to take this message that I just gave and check me out. And the next time you're at church or the next time you turn on TV and you watch one of these people on TV, and by the way, most of Christian television is this prosperity nonsense and it's false. But you'll find that out as you as you study more you'll see what they're saying and what they're doing has nothing to do with the bible but you need to find that out god has to open your own eyes but the more you study scripture study it daily the more you understand what god says the more you will be able to determine and discern right away when you hear a false prophet there's certain buzzwords they use there are certain phrases they use there are certain conjuring things that they do uh, <laughs> I, I usually don't mention names. You know, <laughs> I can't. Maybe one day I'll get into actually naming names because they can be proved to be false prophets. All I'm asking you to do is be a faithful Berean. Make sure that what you're hearing, what you're being taught, is from the Word of God. Make sure it can be proved by the Word of God. Don't be hoodwinked by these charlatans that are out here just getting rich off people and twisting scripture so badly that you don't know if you're coming or going. 
Don't fall into that. I'm telling you from experience. I fell into it. I lost a lot of money. I lost friends over it. I was into some really bad stuff before Jesus came and got me. Okay? I've been on that side. I've been on the phony side. I've been on the dark side. I'm now in the light, 34 years. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I will preach this Bible until I have no more breath in my body. And I'm just warning you. It's a friendly warning. If, if this offends you, then turn me off. Then don't share it. I hope that you will share it. Isaiah 55, 11 says God's word doesn't return void. It'll reach who it needs to reach. If it was meant to reach you, then it'll reach you. Then you heard it tonight. And if it didn't, then you, you won't hear it tonight. If it didn't get through to you. Please pray for 